In Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. Immediately, John says, I was in the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven and one capital O, a one sat on the throne. So Josh saw the door, heard the voice, and now John is in the spirit. So remember, John is writing from this this out of body experience, not just a vision, but John is out of his body in the spirit, the Bible says. Now when the Bible says in the spirit, it means John's body, John's spirit left his body. Now his body could not enter heaven because it had not yet been glorified. However, his spirit could enter in because of the righteousness of Christ. So John's body is not in heaven, but John's spirit is now in the spirit and he's now in heaven. Revelation chapter four, verse three. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in an appearance of an emerald. So the one on the throne, Jesus, this is Jesus on the throne, had the appearance of white stones and red stones. Jasper and sardius, interesting, these are the first and the last stones in the breastplate of the high priest. So the first stone in the breastplate and the last uh, stone in the breastplate are Jasper and Sardius. And they remind us that the one on the throne is our high priest forever and ever. Now, everything we're about to see, I'm going to break down all the symbolism. Here's what I want you to write down. Everything points to Jesus. Write that down. Everything points to Jesus. Everything you see with the stones, everything you see with the living creatures we're about to talk about, the 24 elders, they all point to Jesus, okay? Jasper is opaque or translucent like a diamond. So if you think of Jasper, think of a diamond, and it represents the purity, purity or the holiness of Christ. Sardius is a fiery red, and that represents the blood shed on the cross. So you have the purity and you have the blood. That's Jasper and Sardius. Now in the Old Testament, God promised Noah that he's never gonna destroy the earth with a flood again. And how did God promise Noah? He promised him with a rainbow. And the reason why we're gonna see in John's out of body experience, I was gonna say vision, but really it's his, he's in the spirit. The Bible says he's not having a vision. He's in the spirit. God places a rainbow, an emerald rainbow. Now what does the emerald rainbow represent? It's God's promise that he's not going to destroy the earth in the tribulation period. He will not destroy the earth. Now, as we go on the weeks to come, next week we'll start the four riders of the apocalypse and all that. You're going to see the things that happen during the tribulation are unspeakable. I'm talking about all the animals dying in the ocean, one th third of the world getting just is dying. I mean, you're it's gonna it's unspeakable what's gonna happen. But the emerald rainbow is a reminder to the church and to John that throughout the tribulation, the Lord is not going to destroy the earth. It's a reminder of God's grace and the fact that God is a God that keeps his promises. I want to tell somebody right now that's waiting on a rainbow, somebody that's waiting on God to fulfill a promise that the rainbow is the church's sign. It's not pride. It's not the homosexual movement. None of that. It's a sign from God that his promises are yes and amen. It's a sign from God that he is a man, that he doesn't lie, and he's a man of his word, and he's a man of his promise. So you have to realize that when Jesus had the appearance of Jasper and Sardius, the throne has the appearance of emerald green. Green is the color of life. Green is the color of eternal life. And that comes from God as a result of the shed blood of Jesus and the grace of God. So it's the blood of Jesus, the holiness of God, and the emerald. It represents life and eternal life that's coming from the throne. That's the rainbow of God. It's the promise. Not only the promise that he won't destroy the earth in the tribulation, but the promise of eternal life. And because remember, humans can't describe, humans can't, um, Words can't describe, human words can't describe what John is saying. John is going to use symbolism for us to understand what he's talking about. So he says, the only thing I can say is there's Jasper, there's Sardius, there's Emerald to try to describe. It's not that Jesus is literally a gemstone, but John is saying this is the, the lightest, brightest, reddest, fieriest man I've ever seen. And the only way I can describe it is these stones, these gemstones. Revelation 4, 4. Around the throne were 24 thrones. So he's giving us an image. Guys, here's the amazing, I'm, I'm so excited and passionate about preaching this, but here's the amazing thing. John is giving us an insight to what the throne room of God looks like. He's literally gonna tell us what the throne room of God, you say, I would love to go to the throne. And John is literally about to tell us what the throne looks like. He says around the throne, so here you have a throne, around the throne are 24 thrones and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes that had crowns of gold on their heads on one occasion the entire nation only one place in scripture the entire nation of Israel was represented by 24 special priests 
just as the 24 priests, listen to what I'm going to say, represented all of Israel, the 24 elders represent all believers from Pentecost to the rapture. So the 24 elders around the throne are a representation of all of the church. Okay, so they're going to represent us. So when you see the 24 elders, this is a representation of us. They represent us. When the 24 elders represented Israel, when the 12 elders represented the 12 tribes, these are representations of Israel, now representations of the church. And they're going to surround the throne of God as representative of a nation of kings and priests. Because remember, we are now a nation of kings and priests. And just as these elders are dressed in white in heaven, we are also going to be clothed in white representing the righteousness of Christ. If you're wondering what you're going to be wearing in heaven, you're going to be clothed in white representing the righteousness of Christ. Revelation 3, 5. He that overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I'll confess his name before my Father and the angels. So what are we wearing in heaven? We're clothed in white garments, representing the righteousness of Christ. Now, they're also going to wear golden crowns. Why? Because we will wear golden crowns in heaven. In heaven, you're going to be wearing a crown. Now, why do I know this? One, because the 24 elders are representing the church. Any Revelation scholar, anyone that studies Revelation will tell you that. But two, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, do not fear any of the things you're about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you'll have tribulation 10 days. But be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. So God is going to give us a crown. The crown is called the crown of life. And we're also going to have crowns. I have in another video, just type in eternal rewards on my channel, the different crowns and how you can earn each crown. There's many, there's, I think four or five different eternal crowns that we can earn in book of revelation that God is going to give out. So you're going to be wearing white robes and you're going to be wearing a crown. Now there will be some, I don't know if everyone's going to have the crown of life, but there will be some that don't have all the rewards or a full reward. So some will not have the full reward. There's going to be different levels of rewards in heaven. So these 24 elders will stand in for all those who love the Lord. So when you see the 24 elders, they represent the church. Now, it's very important to note that the church will receive its robes and crowns and it's going to begin to reign with Jesus in heaven before the tribulation period. So think about this. This is more proof that we're in a pre-tribulation rapture because before the tribulation happens, John has seen the 24 elders who represent the church in heaven with robes and crowns as if we are going to be there with Christ before the tribulation with robes and crowns. Now, I know there's a lot of people that say, well, I believe in mid-trib or post-trib. Again, it's it's not a salvation issue. I have a lot of, I think I gave a video recently on six reasons why I'm pre-tribulation. I don't know why some people want to suffer. Like some of you believers, you want to be there. You're like, I want to suffer. I want to be tortured by the locusts and I want to go through the fiery hailstorm. Nobody, trust me, nobody wants to suffer what's going on in the, in, in the tribulation period. So here we're going to see the church in crowns of gold and white robes. Revelation chapter four, verse five. I got to go quicker guys, because if not, we're going to be here for four hours. And one, and from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings and voices okay so that's coming out of the throne seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of god so think of it when you see lightning or thunder and you hear you know if lightning and thunder is happening there's a storm coming and you open up your app you turn on the news and you know okay there's a storm coming there's lightning and thundering a storm is approaching that's what lightning and thundering signifies so the same way, and the reason why John in chapter four is seeing lightning and thundering because God is signaling to John, but there is a great storm coming and God's patience with the earth is wearing thin and the tribulation period is approaching. So understand that the th thunder and lightning is a sign that we're about to experience a storm. Now, when I was in Texas Saturday night, I was worshiping uh, before service and I felt the Lord say, Isaiah, and I prophesied this in 2019 before 2020. I don't have to tell you about the storm that happened in 2020. You all know what happened. But I prophesied in 2019 that there's a storm coming to the church. I have a video clip of this. The storm is coming to the church and the church isn't ready. And I'm not trying to freak you out, scare you. Don't ask me what it is. I don't know. But as I was worshiping on Saturday night before I took the stage, I was, in, I was on stage worshiping. I heard the Lord clearly say, I heard the Lord very clearly say there's a, a storm coming to the church not just america but to the church and my church is not prepared i don't know what that means i don't know if that's this year next year but guys just be ready have your act together make sure you're in prayer make sure you know the lord you're walking in the fear of god you're walking in holiness because i believe you i'm telling you now that there's another storm coming and the church needs to be prepared 
So understand that there is a storm coming. We need to be ready for the storm that is coming. It's going to be happening. The last time I said that was in 2019. I don't get on and say that all the time. It's been almost or yeah, about two years actually almost two years on the dot since I, I've said that but I really believe that there is a storm coming so the thundering is John seeing an approaching storm called the tribulation will be the greatest storm that the earth has ever seen now we already discussed the seven spirits of God that's in Isaiah 11 2 that's the spirit of the Lord the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding the spirit of counsel the spirit of might the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord those are the seven spirits the seven virtues of the Holy Spirit so we see the Holy Spirit that fills believers everywhere is also burning before the throne so here's what we have at the throne just to give you guys a review god the father who's on the throne jesus at the right hand of god and the seven spirits of god burning the bible says the seven lamps that represent the seven spirits are burning before the throne so right there you have the entire trinity the entire godhead before the throne luke 22 69 says from now on the son of man will be seated at the right hand of uh, of the power of god romans 8 34 says who is to condemn christ jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised and who is at the right hand of god who is indeed interceding for us colossians 3 1 it says if then you have been raised with christ seek the things that are above where christ is seated at the right hand of god hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 looking to jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of god acts 2 33 being therefore exalted to the right hand of god hebrews 10 12 but when christ had offered a one time or all for all time a single sacrifice for sins he sat down at the right hand of god first peter 3 22 who has gone into heaven and is at now the right hand of god with angels authorities and powers that are subjected to him act 7 55 but he full of the holy spirit gazed into heaven and saw the glory of god and jesus standing at the right hand of god behold i see the heavens open and the son of man is standing at the right hand of god this is when stephen was being martyred it's the only time in scripture that jesus was standing and not sitting and scholars say that when stephen was martyred jesus literally stood up and looked right down at stephen as he saw this vision over and over jesus seated at the right hand of god the holy spirit is there jesus is there and the father's there. i'm going to show you this after even in more detail revelation 4 chapter 4 verse 6 if you're loving this type 1 before the throne there was a sea of glass so now we have the throne before the throne a sea of glass like crystal and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes front and back so in front of the throne was something calm, beautiful, a crystal glassy sea. Now prophecy experts suggest the sea of glass is the church right there before the throne of God. Because uh, biblically, a sea symbolizes the masses of humanity. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So if you go later on, Revelation shows us that the mass waters represent a sea of people. So this is what some scholars believe. I don't know whether I believe that or it's a literal sea. We don't know if it's symbolic or it's literal. But this is what some experts would suggest. It might just be a crystal sea that's like a glassy ocean a glassy sea or it could represent also a sea of people we don't know but this is just what scholars think they think that the water also represents the multitudes it doesn't matter what it represents what what we see here is that at the throne of god there's a calmness there's no turbulence in that sea in front of the throne there's no unrest but the church is going to be at peace with god right before him and there's going to be living creatures now ezekiel chapter 1 gives details on the seraphim so does isaiah chapter 6. isaiah chapter 6 says in the year that king uzziah died i saw the lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple above it stood so above the throne stood seraphim each one had six wings two covered his face two covered his feet and with two he flew and one cried to another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory these majestic creatures they gaze upon the lord day and night and they cry out holy 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 is the lord god almighty and these are what the bible would describe as seraphim a certain type of angel many believe which i believe are the highest ranking angel or the highest level the most holy as you could say it angel that exists and these are the seraphim 